is. But what's interesting is that the way she's walking and the way she's standing on this foot is going to actually tip us off to where this problem is before we even pick that foot up. You can see as we get her in the chute and take a look at this foot, notice her toe, notice how she's rocking back on her heels. That toe is not even touching the ground, and that's because she doesn't want to put pressure on that toe because of this. Look at the split in that toe. The problem is going to be underneath there, so let's get started on this and show you exactly where it is. So as I mentioned, sometimes cows can give away little hints as to where that problem is before you even pick that foot up. In this case, the way she was rocking back on her heels told us that that problem was in her toes. And also, if she's got one on her heels, she will put the weight on her toes. You can tell which claw it is. If it's on a lateral claw on the back foot, she will turn her feet so that she's putting more pressure on the medial claw. There's little things like that you can pick up just by watching them walk. And that's kind of why I always like to do that before I put a cow in the chute. I'm watching to see how that foot lands, how she's walking. If those can give me a little bit of uh, hints as to where that problem is going to be before I even pick it up. Because believe it or not, sometimes these problems will be so small and so minor that you'll start to second guess yourself once you have that foot in the air. You won't know for sure. You'll look at it and think the problem might be here but you're not sure and you start to second guess if the problem was even on that claw. But on this one, it's pretty obvious where it is. We've got some separation there, right in the right-hand corner of that claw is where that problem is gonna be. So we're gonna get to work on that. You'll notice I got two different knives here. One of the questions I get a lot is, is why are some knives thicker than the others? It simply has to do with how often they've been sharpened. I always start them out when they're thicker. I use those knives for more of the more uh, aggressive cutting where I'm taking off bigger pieces. But when I'm working on fine detail stuff like this, I'm gonna use that thinner bladed knife. You can get those knives sharper and do more precise cutting with them. Usually when I'm filming a trim, I try to be a little bit more cognizant of where I put my hands in relation to the camera. In this case, I failed. I blocked it a little bit here. You'll be able to see more here in a minute. This dark colored horn right here is just some staining. The problem is gonna be right here in this corner, so let's get to work on that. When you have lesions in and around that toe triangle, oftentimes they are gonna be associated with some pronounced lameness in that foot. Here you can see that horn starting to push up a little bit. The reason that is, is because when that cow takes that step, it's putting a lot of pressure toward that toe area. And obviously when you have an, a lesion in that little spot with a lot of pressure there, it's going to create, it's going to cause that cow to try to step differently to try to alleviate that. So that's why you're going to see that pronounced lameness. Every time she puts that foot down, there's a lot of pain associated with that. So she tries to lift it up and tries to get that weight onto that other, other foot. So in this case, because it's right along that white line, that horn is actually working its way into that corium. It's like pushed right up tight against it. And that also makes it painful. You can see here, watch as that pressure escapes from that lesion area. Yikes. She's going to feel better almost instantly just from that coming out of there. You can see that little plug of debris that was holding all that pressure in. Now we got to get a block in that other claw and we'll go back to work to open this up.
Have you ever put the block on the wrong claw before? No, but I put the glue on the wrong side of the block before. In that case, you have to start all over. right in this corner where that horn is almost interwoven right into that corium. It's these corners or these areas that can be really particularly difficult to work in, but you need to get that horn that's pushed up into that corium away from there because that's what's causing a lot of that discomfort. You can see some area there that's starting to bubble up. That's the area where we've got some separation underneath there and that horn that's intertwined into that corium. So we got to tease that away, try to get all of that loose horn out of there so we can get this cow back on the mend and take care of that discomfort that's bothering her. This is the trickiest part of that trim. If you look close, you can see all those little edges that are working their way, pushing right up tight to the corium. Got to try to get this cleaned out a ways so I can see all of the edges, then t work my knife and up underneath those little flaps to try to cut those away. If I leave those there, all they're going to do is trap debris and irritate that area. So I have to ease my knife up behind that and try to cut away as I pull those out. And then once we get that completely free, then we can get it all cleaned up and get it wrapped. Now we can get that salicylic acid wrap in place. Now the salicylic acid does a couple of things. Number one, it's gonna exfoliate the, that area, pull away any of the, the uh, damaged tissue that might be there. Another thing that it's gonna do is it, it's going to provide some pain relief, some localized pain relief to the area. And another thing it's gonna do is help eliminate bacteria in that it's got a low pH, so that has a bactericidal effect. Here you can see her putting weight back on that claw and she's gone. A couple weeks, we'll check back and see how she's doing. Hopefully that foot is a lot more comfortable then. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.